Okay, so um, we already completed Bab 7 in last class. Okay, so in Bab 7, we are basically uh, talking about the penyata kewangan sebelum, okay, before pelarasan. Okay, so if you still remember how the perakaunan what do you call that? Uh, kitaran per accountant. Okay, the accounting cycle looks like you will see that uh, you have a pelarasan. Okay, then after that will be the imbangan terselaras. Okay, so with this pelarasan, so that's why in this chapter we will be learning about pelarasan. Okay. So this after this Valarasan, then you can do more difficult questions. So after that will be your penyata kewangan. Plus the Valarasan question. Ah, so this is a more complicated, more challenging. Questions. Okay, before that, we will just book up account for account perdagangan, account untung rugi, penyata kedudukan kewangan only. Okay, so straight away take from the soalan. But in pelarasan, then you have to do a lot of uh, correction. I will correct. A correction. Okay, pelarasan basically means correction. So you need to correct and to uh, a main to change, all right. The the figure, the amount that is shown on your uh imbangan duga. Okay, so as we are doing it, then you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's quickly and uh for this chapter, you can see that uh this one I label it as eight a. Okay, so there is eight a, eight b. 8C, 8D, and 8E. Okay, so A will be the account nominal. All right, so this valorization will be all about account nominal. So after that will be BB will be the hutang ragu, hutang lapo, peruntukan hutang ragu. Then C will be all the susut nilai, susut nilai terkumpu. Okay. Like in susut nilai, they have different kaedah. Kaedah atas cost, kaedah atas buku nilai, uh, and so on. So that will be for C. Then D will talk about the pelupusan atas asset bukan semasa. Ah, yeah, so it's actually here. You see, the jenis pelarasan, A account nominal, B all these things, C the susut nilai, down Q be the pelupusan asset bukan semasa. Pelus, pelupusan bukan as, uh, asset bukan semasa means when you want to sell your asset bukan semasa. Contoh, your kenderaan. You want to sell your perabot. You want to sell your premise. So when you sell that, how do we do the accounting for it? Now that's the question. So in donkey, in part D, in bab 8, we will be learning about that. Okay? Then the E will be the total of everything. Okay, the questions for total of this thing and also to do a penetra kedudukan kewangan. PKK. And also account perdagangan, account untung rugi and so on. Alright. So, after that. So, this today we start from A lah. Account nominal. Okay. So, are you guys ready? Give me another A if you are ready for this account nominal part. Part A. All right. Okay. So, account nominal, just uh, basically talking about belanja and also hasil. Okay. Account nominal means belanja and hasil. And then there is another thing called account catatan. I mean, not catatan, account nyata. Remember your classification, there are five. Asset, liability, equity per mille, 
belanja hasil. So, belanja and hasil is in account nominal. Maksudnya, the other three will be asset, liability, and lastly, your equity permit. Ah. So, all these three is actually what we call account netto. Is it? That's why the A we call it account nominal. Because this account nominal, meaning this person will be doing on belanja and hasil. Okay? And then, in let's go, uh, let's focus on belanja first. Okay? So, in belanja, we actually break down to three types of belanja. The belanja prabaya, the belanja belum baya, and also the belanja sebena. Okay? So, what is prabaya? Prabaya basically means you buy a lebih. Or you can say in English, you say pay extra. All right, so means prabaya. Yeah, you, you belanja, you pay more, then there is a prabaya. Okay, then the same belanja baya, there is another called belumaya, means what? Haven't paid. Okay, belum bayar mah. Alright, so a very simple contoh that I always give in my class is, let's say, your you run tuition, your tuition fee. Okay, let's say the you run is 100 ringgit sebulan. Okay, sebulan. Per month. Okay, so here, this 100 ringgit is a contoh of belanja sebenar. Meaning, what is the actual you run? What is the actual tuition fee for every month? For this month, let's say this month is October. Okay? What is the tuition fee for October? Sebenarnya is 100 ringgit. Alright? Okay, but let's say in this month, you buy a 100, you, your, your, your parents accidentally pay me 120 ringgit. This is apa yang telah bayar. Okay, you pay 100 ringgit. But the tuition fee, what is sebenar? 100 ringgit. But berapa yang you bayar? You bayar 120 ringgit. Maksudnya, how much? There is 20 ringgit. And this 20 ringgit, is it pay extra or haven't paid it? The answer is you pay extra 20 ringgit. So this will be called a prabaya. You see? And this prabaya will be bring to November. So in November, in October, kamu sudah bayar 20 ringgit. Then in November, berapa yang you perlu bayar lagi? Do you still have to pay 100 ringgit? No. You just use the 100 minus 20. So you just perlu top up another 80 ringgit. It becomes the belanja sebenar. Do you get it? If yes, you give me a 1 in the chat box. So from here, you can see that this 20 ringgit is a Prabaya. Can you see, see or not? When you pay extra, next month you don't need to pay. You don't need to pay 20 ringgit. So that is something like happy gun. You pay extra and then next month you just pay a bit kurang. So that's why Prabaya is a asset. Is it prabaya is a asset. So if it is an asset, you will go into the PKK. Okay, later I will show you how. Okay, 
So that is a contoh for prabaya. But what about belum bayar? Okay, the so same thing. Let's say in December. Same thing lah. Tuition fee is hundred ringgit sebulan. All right. But now you only pay fifty ringgit. Apa yang telah bayar? Okay, you pay 15 ringgit. So, you use a sebena, tolak apa yang telah bayar 15 ringgit, ada 50 ringgit lagi. Yang 50 ringgit ini ada apa? Amount yang belum bayar. Jesus, son, belum bayar. You haven't paid 15 ringgit mah. Right. So, when we go to next year, let's say this is 2022, so when we go to 2023 uh, January, you masih hutang saya RM50. Betul tak? Yang belum bayar daripada December. So dalam January, berapakah belanja sebenar itu for my urine? RM100. So you have to add RM100. Maksudnya, what is the amount yang perlu dibayar dalam January? It becomes RM100. 50 ringgit. So you have to know what is the prabaya and what is the belumbai and how both of them works. And because you hutang orang, okay, you hutang saya 50 ringgit belumbai, that's why hutang means a liability. So are you clear for this belanja prabaya and belanja belumbai? If yes, I want to see a yes in the chat box. Okay, yes. All right, cool. Okay, so let's start with question one straight away. Okay, so take up your notebook. Let's do question one. Yeah. Read, uh, let's read it together. Soalan satu, insurance yang perlu dibayar oleh perniagaan million A pada 31st December ialah RM10,000. Meaning, this is what apa yang perlu dibayar. Perlu dibayar maksud apa? Sebenar. What we are supposed to pay is RM10,000. Alright, so this is something that is sebenar. Insurance sebenar. Then, pada akut tempoh perikonan, perniagaannya telah bayar. Telah bayar. Sebanyak 12,500. Tempo perikanan berakhir pada setiap 31st uh, December. So A, menghitungkan insurance prabaya. How much is the prabaya? So very simple. Okay. Insurance prabaya. Ikut so, just now itself. So, apa yang telah bayar tolak sebenar, belanja sebenar. So, from here, apa yang telah dibayar? Twelve thousand five hundred. Tola, the belanja sebenar is ten thousand, right? Ten thousand. So twelve thousand five hundred minus ten thousand, you will get two thousand five hundred. So from here we know that the two thousand five hundred adalah extra. You pay more because just imagine your tuition is just ten thousand ringgit. But you telah bayar 12,500. Isn't that extra? So when you think it is extra, then that is what we call a prabaya. Alright, insurance means the belanja lah. So this belanja is insurance mah. So insurance prabaya. Hitungkan, so we get 2,500. Are you guys clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box. 
All right, so it's very simple. Hitung saja, hitung. Okay, A very simple, B. Now, menyediakan catatan pelarasan ke dalam jenang. So, please, please take note of this part. Okay, so we have to do catatan pelarasan. So, there is an error in here. Okay, the error means we pay extra 2,500 ringgit. Okay, so how do we catatkan? How do we record this 2,500, this insurance prabaya? So now we have to record in the journal arm. So now we bought a journal arm. So in journal arm, there is tarik. Bukiran. Ready. Ready. Okay, if you want a folder here, also can up to you. But the folder is in, uh, we don't use it here. So RM, RM, this is in year 2017. Okay, so this is the format for your journal arm now. Okay, I never change or add anything. It's like that. This is your journal arm. Okay, so from here, we need to know how to record for this insurance provider. So now, first, we have always, uh, we need to always remember that the prabaya is an asset. Should I fix? Okay, it's ready fixed. You don't you cannot change it. Prabaya, prabaya is a set. So now take out your secret weapon. What is that? Your abalin. Okay? Or not? So this is the asset. This is your belanja. This is your ambulance. Liability, hasil, and modal. Okay, so now look at this prabaya. Prabaya is an asset. An asset is where? It's in the debit side. Therefore, we just straight away debit your insurance. Remember the first Last date, the first. So you just debit your insurance prabaya. How much? You just put in the figure that you just calculated, 2,500. So what do we credit? This insurance provider from where? So you take this one. This is actually account insurance from account insurance. So you just put credit insurance. Same figure, 2,500. So here your kadaranga, you can just say merekot gun insurance prabaya Done. Are you guys okay with B? If yes, you give me a B in the chat box. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's very simple. So you just see what is it? Is it a prabaya or a balumba? If it is a prabaya, then you straight away put it in. Okay, so this is how you record for your journal. Um, but how do we record for our account insurance? Uh, a ledger, All right? So what you can do is account insurance. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, we'll do a bandok T.
account insurance. Okay. There are a few way to do this. I mean, there are two ways. Okay. This way, number one, which is uh, in your textbook. All right. So this is a, a more complete way to do this account insurance. So how are you going to do that? Okay. First, you put in all the years and unit first. Okay, then see how much we pay. Okay, we pay twelve thousand five hundred. Ini ialah apa yang kita telah bayar. So when you pay, apabila kita bayar, wang keluar. When wang keluar means credit, right? Credit apa? Wang keluar daripada mana? Daripada bank, because dalam bank you gonna bank to pay for your insurance 12,500. Therefore, you have to credit your bank. Fair enough. You have to credit your bank. So when you credit your bank, always to account, my right? If satu account telah di credit gun, then another account must be the debit gun. Therefore, if I really credit my bank, I have to debit my account insurance. So here, December 31st, from where? There about the bank, 12,500. Right? Okay. And then, another thing is, this one. Insurance. How much is the insurance sebenar? The insurance sebenar is 10,000. Betul tak? The insurance yang perlu, yang perlu dibayar means the insurance sebenar is 10,000. So this 10,000 yang sebenar have to send to where? Have to send to your account untung rugi. Right. When we are doing our account untung rugi, if there is an insurance, then we have to put under the belanja. So the insurance is in account untung rugi. Now, think. In your account untung rugi, you are if we are doing a bentuk T, the hasil is here. Or not? The hasil is on the credit side. Mana color the belanja is on the debit side. Just like your abalim. And this is belanja is on the debit, hasil is on the credit. Okay, so insurance is a belanja, therefore I will debit my account untung rugi. Correct. So when I debit my account untung rugi, if I really debit my account untung rugi, then I have to credit my account insurance. So therefore, December 31st year will be to account untung rugi. How much is that? Sebenar, 10,000. So you put 10,000. You see that? So after that, skip one line. Okay, so we compare lah. Okay, so 12,500 for the visa. So you put it in the jumla, 12,500. So here, 12,500 minus 10,000, we get 2,500. So what is this 2,500? Meaning, this 2,500 is the one that we pay extra. Maksudnya, this is our insurance pra buyer. So, can you see that when we mention insurance prabaya, okay, so what about account insurance prabaya? So, we, if you want, you can open another account insurance prabaya to see how we do this. Uh, insurance prabaya. So you see, uh, this is just to show you. So when you see this insurance property, all right? So this insurance property, uh, you really credit in the account insurance. You credit account insurance, therefore you have to debit your account insurance property. Uh. So here, so you put insurance. 
2500. Okay, so this is how we uh, record lah, right in insurance parabaya. So you already debit here. Okay, but then, okay, we cannot do it like that. Just leave it hanging here. Okay, this is not in your syllabus, lah, right? So why we cannot uh, hang it like that? Because if you hang it like that, I mean, you you can also like you just like Paki HP and then Paki BB. One line, the uh, double line. Okay, so insurance so two thousand five hundred bucky HB bucky BB two thousand five hundred. Yes, so this one will become on uh January, you know, January one for oh shit, twenty eighteen. Okay, so let's put a twenty eighteen here. So you see bucky HB bucky BB two thousand five hundred. And is it? But from here. Okay, they will, in, I think textbook is up to here. Okay, I've forgotten if they show it up to here. But then to complete, they actually do it this way. They send, they, they send this back to the account insurance. So yeah, so they close this, 2,500. So I read credit mentions probably right 2500 So this 2500 January 1 will be back to here. Is it not? Insurance. So this is called insurance. Probably. 2500 Hmm. You see it? So it's actually that's why in your in your textbook you see insurance provider here and then insurance provider here. Okay, so this is a bit a long way to do it la. Okay, but then if you want to make it shorter, I mean sometimes you can just skip this part. Okay, you can just do this one. You just write insurance provider. Insurance for buyer, okay. Or another way is instead of writing insurance for buyer, this is like a, a shortcut, okay. You just use what you normally use the Bucky HP and BB. Uh, this is the difference. So you can add it like do here. Or this one. Okay, you can actually, if you have a textbook with you, let me see. Textbook. So you go to page. Yeah. So let's say you have a textbook with you. All right, you can for prabaya right, for insurance. Ah, this one. Okay, go to page two five six. Okay, if you have a textbook with you lah. All right, so if you go to page two five six, you actually see something similar like this one. All right, so you can see that the account insurance they book up and then they send to insurance prabaya. All right, but then what they do is they stop here. They didn't close this one. Okay, it's okay also if you stop here, meaning you got a, a account in Prabaya like this one. Okay, but then like in actual, while well, we are really doing the, the account run, so you actually have to bring it back to account insurance because this is actually a, 
account cemetery. All right. Or another way would be this one. This is something that uh, you cannot find it in your textbook, but it is uh, quite recognized by a lot of uh, teachers as well. So even during my SPM, I was using this method. But this, I mean, I was using this textbook uh, while I was doing my SPM also. All right. So my teacher taught me to use this one because this is way faster. You don't need to write the whole insurance part by insurance part by again. So you just like Bucky HB, then show it into Bucky DB. All right. So this is also the way, I mean, the, the, the way that I'll be using for most of my teaching as well. If you don't like it, you can just straight away change this one to the insurance. If it is a prabaya, then you just write insurance prabaya, insurance prabaya. This one, you can just skip it. You don't have to book out another, another account. But then this one in your textbook, because they are showing you the basic way to open an account. They scare you confused. That's why they do something like that. So like step by step and so on. But then when you are good enough, when you go into the questions later, when you're attending questions in your exercise book or in the exam, they won't want you to do this anymore. Okay, you can, they just want you to do one account, which is account insurance. So you can do, you can give answer like this or answer like this. It's the same thing. It's just that here, the HB, you change the prabaya, BB change your insurance prabaya. Do you get what I mean? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box, please. All right. Okay, so now that is for your prabaya. Okay, now let's go to question two. Okay, so it's the same thing what we are doing, the account nominal. So 2A, let's go for 2A. So 2. Kadabayaran Tawana Little Shooting Training Center, yala 2600. Okay, so this tell you this is a Sabana. Okay, they didn't say Apo America Bayama, right? They just say Kadabayaran Tawana. So every year, their Kadabayaran is 3600. So that's sebenar, the actual one. Then pada akhir tempo perikanan, perniagaannya hanya bayar. Can you see now? They only pay 2,800. Then hitungkan kada bayaran yang belum bayar. So how much yang kita belum bayar lagi? So hitung, so same thing. Kada bayaran belum bayar. You just use sebenar. And just a bana minus uh tala baya. Apo yan tala di baya. Tala di baya. So the subana is 3600. And then apo yan tala di baya is 2800. So it goes to 800. So meaning this. 800 ialah kada bayaran yang belum bayar lagi. So, I haven't paid 800 yet. Okay, so this is the amount for A. Then for B, we have to do a pelarasan, a general arm like this one. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste this table. You need to draw it out quickly now. But then the information is different now. This is on 20. It didn't say which year, so we just leave it as 2017. All right, at the tahun ma. Okay, December 31st. Okay, so after you put tari, well, I got procurance. We just procurance, no S. Okay, so butiran, folio, debit, credit, year, ringgit, ringgit, Malaysia. La, if normally if they don't give the year, then you just skip it lah. Okay, you don't have to put it for them. All right. So like that, then you draw a line, line, line. All right. So kada bayan belum bayar. So always remember, if pra bayar is an asset, then bayar. If pra bayar asset, then belum the same word bayar. The other one will be opposite, meaning the liability. If you forget, then you just remember account belum bayar. Account belum bayar is a liability. 
You get what I mean? Account belum bayar is a liability, meaning whatever there is in the front and then other the word belum bayar, then it is a liability also. So if it is a liability based on my abalim here, liability is on the credit side. Therefore, you straight away know we have to credit kada bayaran belum bayar. So how much? 800 ringgit. Okay, so what do we debit? Same thing. If this one is kada bayan burun bayan, so you just take the front part kada bayan run. So you debit kada bayan run. Then when we are writing the keterangan, you just write merekod. What is this? Kada bayan burun bayan. Merekod kan kada bayaran burun bayan. Just that simple. So we we'll move on to see same thing. We just book up a account key. Okay, so here I'll just straight away go into uh the shortcut, meaning the HB and BB. Now forget to tell you. The reason how we can determine from this HP and BB that if this is a prabaya or a balloon buy is very simple. Always look at the last account BB, ma. right? So this account BB is where? In the debit side. If it is in the debit side, meaning this is an asset. Correct not? So this is an asset. So for insurance, what would be the asset? Insurance, prabaya lah. You get what I mean? All right, if it is here, Meaning, if the Bucky view is here, meaning this is a liability. So, what insurance is a liability? Insurance balloon bayar. Then it becomes a liability. So, it's either you add the word prabaya atau balloon bayar for belanja. Alright? So, as you can see, there are only two choices. Either prabaya atau balloon bayar. Then, hasu is different word lah. But then, for belanja, only got these two words. And then, prabaya memang asset. Belum bayar memang is a liability. Alright. Okay. So uh, let's finish this account first. Account. Kada. Bayaran. Okay. They didn't give you. So just ignore it. Alright. So same thing. When the, when it is a kada buyer run, okay, let's say you tell up hanya buyer 2800. So you buy ma. When you buy your money keluar ma. When your money keluar means you credit ma. You credit apa? When your money keluar, you credit your bank lah. Same thing lah, like here lah. You credit your bank. So when you credit your bank, you have to debit your kada buyer run. So here you write bank. Berapa yang telah dibayar? 2800. Okay. So next thing. This is a kada bayan. Kada bayan is a belanja. Okay, if it is a belanja, it will be in which side of your account? Don't we? In the debit side also. The, all the belanja is in the debit side. Just like your abalim show, your belanja is in the debit side. Therefore, I debit my account don't we? for this 3,600 ringgit. If I debit my account don't we? then in my kada bayan, I have to credit it. Account untung rugi three thousand six hundred. After that, any compelo, which side is bigger? So three thousand six hundred is bigger, ma. So you put here and three thousand six hundred. So here you use the three thousand six minus two thousand eight, then you will get eight hundred. 800. So if you are using the shortcut method that I mentioned just now, so you can straight away Baki HB, Baki HB to Baki BB. 800. Actually, here. Uh, never mind, actually, because I'm not showing you over. All right. 800. So this will be the next year, January 1. So, hantar to bawah. 
So now this bucky BB is on the credit side, meaning this is a liability. Is it? So this is the liability on the credit side, 800 ringgit. So when it is on the credit side, means what? This is a, a balloon buyer lah, because only balloon buyer, belanja balloon buyer is a liability and on the credit side. So this will be a kada buyer and balloon buyer. Or the other way, if you don't to use this HBBB, how do we put? So you just recopy this whole thing, kada bayaran belum ayah and then here same thing kada bayaran belum bayar so you can see it's a bit longer lah okay but then yeah just letting you know lah right it's kada bayaran belum bayar but then it's too ugly already. So I just put Kaki HP and TD. Lazy to adjust my alignment. All right. So I guess clear with question two. If yes, give me two in the chat box. So you can see that all the pattern is almost the same. The pattern is there. All right. So you just need to know the pattern, the concept. Then you can use the same pattern and concept to do all the other questions, right? Okay, so that's all for the belanja side. So belanja are the dual, belanja belum bayar, which is the liability, and also belanja pra by pay extra. So that is your asset. Okay, belum bayar, prabaya, belum bayar, prabaya. Okay, now we go to hasil. So hasil same thing. There is hasil sebenar. Other than hasil sebenar, there are two. Hasil belum terima and also hasil belum terpoleh. So very simple. Let's look at belum terima first. So if it is a hasil belum terima, do you still remember what is the other term that has the word belum terima? The very normal one, account belum terima. So you can see that the account belum terima is an asset. Right? Asset semasa account belum terima. So meaning, if we change the word account to other term, hasil, commission, dividend, all these things, and as long as there's the word belum terima, then it is also an asset. You know, that's why I say hasil belum terima. So all the hasil belum terima, all the belum terima is a asset. If belum terima is an asset, then a belum terpoleh will be opposite, becomes a liability. All right. Okay. Give you an example. It's good to give you an example so that you can understand. All right. So for this, belum terima and belum terpoleh. So now, this must always be hasil. Alright, hasil means your income, lah, right? So, meaning when you receive money. So, a normal hasil for us, okay, or for you all, as a student is what? Allowance. Hello, da. Around allowance from your family. So this is actually part of your hasil. If you don't have allowance from your family or from where, then you don't have money to, to buy food to survive, isn't it? So that's why we have the hasil from, I mean, the allowance from the family. So we consider it as a hasil. So let's say your parents is giving you 100 ringgit. Oh, we don't use 100, very boring already. Okay, let's say um, 90, okay? 90 ringgit per month. Wow, crazy. Okay, 90 ringgit per month. Allowance, ah, setiap bulan, your parent will give you 90 ringgit. Okay, so this definitely is a hasil sebenar. This is what we're going to receive. Okay, so now. Okay, 
So now, let's say in January, remember, has your summer is 19 ringgit. Your parents suddenly give you 100 because they only got the 100 bank note. Okay, they don't have a small, small note to give to you. So they just give you a 100 note. Okay, so this 100 note is what? It's upper yang. It's not the Serbana. It's upper yang terima. 100 ringgit. So, if this is the 100 ringgit yang kamu terima, and you have to minus the Serbana 90 ringgit, maksudnya, this 10 ringgit kita telah menerima extra. Meaning this, you receive Extra. This is what we call belum terperoleh. This ten ringgit is a belum terperoleh. When this ten ringgit extra, then this ten ringgit will bring to next year February. Ten ringgit. So your parents will be extra ma, 10 ringgit ma. So in February, your parents say, eh, uh, bulan lepas saya telah bayar you uh, extra 10 ringgit. So bulan ini, February, saya top up another 80 ringgit for you lah. Is it not? So it becomes 90, which is your hasil sebenar. Can you see how this concept works? So, when you receive extra, it is called a balum tabula. So it is not an extra hasil. It's just that you receive extra and this extra would be deducted from next month. That's why it's not something good actually. That's why it's called a balum tabula. That's why it is a liability. Because when you get extra 10 ringgit, you cannot spend. If you spend this 10 ringgit, Next month, you only got 80 ringgit to, to spend. That's why you receive this 10 ringgit, you have to save it until next month only can, can spend this 10 ringgit. So it's somehow like a hutang. You cannot really enjoy the 10 ringgit. You know what I mean? So that's why it is a liability. But then another example, let's say in March, you ask, your, you ask money from your dad, but your dad say, Ayah, Sekarang saya hanya ada lima puluh ringgit saja, so I bayar you lima puluh ringgit je lah. Then you use your own money, and then next month saya bayar you balik the the other remaining. So from here, the total terima is fifty ringgit. Okay, but how much is the sebenar? The sebenar is ninety. Kena. So if ninety minus fifty or fifty minus ninety, you get how much? 40. So, maksudnya, supposedly should be 90 ringgit. This is a servant. Ah. Tapi, saya hanya menerima 50 ringgit sahaja. So, ibu masih hutang saya 40 ringgit. So, this 40 ringgit adalah amount yang haven't received. Or, in the end, we call it a belum terima. Yeah, so sometimes it's good that people owe you money. So when people owe you money, so you feel like, eh, uh, Adam still owe me 10 ringgit, Abu still owe me 50 ringgit, John still owe me another 50 ringgit, and then this, uh, whoever. Lah. You see, so when they owe you money, it's actually our money. It's something like asset. You get it? So that's why a balloon terima, any balloon terima, is a asset. So in after March will be April. So you are the 40 ringgit and belum bayar right, belum terima right. So 40 ringgit plus uh, April punya 90 ringgit yang sebenar. So in April you will receive 130 ringgit for your allowance. This 40 is actually from last month. Tapi in April what is the 
allowance sebenar 90 ringgit only tapi ini ialah apa yang akan terima are you guys clear if yes you give me a c in the chat box so for hasil ada dua belum terperoleh and belum terima belum terima memang is a hasil if bukan hasil Be, uh, belum terima memang is a asset so if belum terima is a asset belum terperoleh will be the opposite which is the liability all right so it's just that way it's already fixed all right so let's do the question Okay, let's see what is the question for question three. So in question three, kedai Sean menerima komisen berjumlah 1,400 pada tahun lagi perkhidmatan yang diberi. Komisen ini, okay, so menerima komisen berjumlah bagi perkhidmatan. Okay, dari komisen ini telah, okay, so when you see telah diterima, this is the amount yang kita uh, receive sebanyak 800 ringgit dan bakinya pada 2nd February 2021 meaning the remaining amount will be on this date and this date is actually after 31st December 2020 can you see it? maksudnya yeah let's go let's go question 3 A so she is commission so they should we take a commission belum terima lah we know lah right because we are supposed sebenar is 1004 kita hanya menerima 800. Maksud, there's another how much yang belum terima. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So, commission belum terima equals to uh, sebenar. Hasil sebenar. Minus uh, telah ter diterima. So, hasil sebenar is 1,400 minus setelah diterima is 800 and then you get 1,400 minus 800, you get 600. So, 600 ringgit is your commission yang belum terima. Is it? So, it's very simple maths, quick maths. But more importantly, make sure you understand the concept. Okay, then D. So B, you have to do the journal arm again. We have to record this pelarasan into uh, the journal arm. So here, okay, clear this off, clear this off. So this is what you have to do. Quickly draw out the tarik, booty run, folio, debit, credit, then draw the box, and then ring it, ring it, Malaysia, and then the year, then the year will be 2020 lah, right? 2020. Last day will be December 31st. Alright, have you done the genome? Okay, so same. We use the same pattern, same concept, same reasoning. So here, Belum Terima already told you many times, Belum Terima is a what? Asset or liability? It's asset. So if asset, you refer back to your avalin, EBA. Asset is where? In the debit side. So if it is asset, you debit. So you debit. Commission belum terima. Can you see it? It's very simple. So commission, what is the original account for commission? Account commission, this is commission diterima, right? Account commission diterima, so you credit it. So what is the amount? 600, so it put 600, 600. What is this? We want to record, uh, record gun commission belum terima. Uh, right, then C is the same. Lah. Okay, so you can see it's actually the same pattern. This account commission deterima. 
Okay, so for this one, let's look at the money first. Commission ini telah diterima sebanyak 800. So when you terima your bank account, you receive money. So you have to, the money comes in, right? Comes in means debit, you have to debit your bank. So when I debit my bank, the other account must be credit. So here, the bank will be here. So this is how much? 800 ringgit. You terima. Okay. So commission D terima is what? It's a hasuma. Right? Commission D terima. I say I'm not talking about commission volume terima. Commission D terima and commission volume terima is two different things. Huh? Even though they are commission, but one is the sabana and then another one is the volume terima. Okay. So meaning this one. Menerima commission this is actually the sabana, the hasil sabana. And the hasil sabana is actually the amount that is sent to the account only. That's why in here, the belanja sabana go to the account only. AUK, the belanja will be the account only. AUK account untung. Why K there? I still don't know. Is a K or R? Is a is a R or not K? Ah, you notice it. Yeah. A U R account untung lagi. Okay, so this hasil sebena, hasil sebena will be the in the account untung lagi also when it is hasil. But then when it, if it is a belum terima, then it's an asset go to PKK. All right. So back to here. So if you have an account untung lagi A U R, because it is hasil hasil, then you put in here. You credit your A U R. So when I credit my account untung lagi. Then I have to debit my account commission lah. Here lah. So here put account untuk So um, how much? Yang sebenar thousand four hundred. So you put here thousand four hundred. So after that you add up. So this one equals to this one minus this one. So as I said, you can put commission. Belum terima here, commission belum terima here. Or you follow my way, I will normally use Baki HB, Baki DB. Six hundred. Jadi twenty one. January one. Right, so why is it on the debit side? Because it is an asset. Why is it asset? Because this is a commission balloon terima. Are you guys clear for question three? If yes, you type a three in the chat box, please. Great. Yeah, I give you some time to complete this. I think I'm a bit fast. All right. Okay. Then we go to question four. So same thing again. So question four. Sewa tahunan yang ditetapkan berjumlah enam ribu ringgit. Okay. So you can see that this is telah ditetapkan. Meaning this is a sewa, ah, uh, sewa sebenar. All right. And then, but the akhir tema perkara sewa yang telah diterima is sebanyak six thousand five hundred. So this is apa yang kita diterima is six thousand five hundred, but the sebenar is just six thousand. Can you see? We actually receive kita telah terima extra of five hundred ringgit. So let's do question four. So this result to become a belum terpeole because just now I told you ma, when you receive extra, that becomes a liability. It is a belum terpeole. So sewa belum terpeole. So yes, uh, apa yang telah diterima up to you lah. Okay, up to terima then minus the hasil sebenar. 
the, the remote is 6,500. But the Serbana is just 6,000 only. We are supposed to. Kita perlu menerima 6,000 sahaja. Tapi kita terima extra 500. So this 500, we call it a saver belum terboleh. So how do we record in the journal arm? You use the same logic to do it. So first thing first, you book out your journal arm. There is no year for this one also. Okay. Just put this number to the first. Akuma. All right. So, Seva Belum Tepoole is a liability. We all know. Okay. Everyone type L in the chat box for liability. Seva Belum Terima is a L. Type L. Liability. Right? No, huh? Okay. So if it's a liability in the Abalim, where do we put debit or credit? Everyone type K in the chat box for credit. Uh, all right. Liability in the credit side. Therefore, we now we have to K it. We have to credit it. Save belum terpole. So you credit, save. Belum terperole. Ah, so it's very simple. Same logic. So credit, saver belum terpole. The other account will be the, the original account, which is the saver determinant. All right, this is actually a hasil a saver yang determinant lah. Can you see? So saver yang determinant. It's not a saver dibayar. We are not paying this saver. All right. Okay. So how much is this saver belum terpole? We already calculated. 500 ringgit, put it in 500, 500. So, just write my record done. Belum, the ole. Okay, then we're going to see. Book out account ledger account T. Okay. So account saver the thirty one. Okay, so same thing, same concept. Let's look at bank first because bank is the most easy, easiest one. Because when you understand bank, the debit means penerimaan, credit means pembayaran, money goes out. Okay, so we start always start from bank, easier. So here, apa yang berapa kita terima? 6,500 ringgit. So when you terima wang in the bank account, we debit bank. So we debit bank, see here. Debit bank. So after we debit bank, meaning where I have to credit my account seven terima. So here bank. How much yang kita terima? Six thousand five hundred. You put it in. Okay. After that, use the same logic. What is the hasil serbana? The hasil serbana is six thousand ringgit, and the hasil serbana will go into the account untung rugi. And the account untung rugi, which side is it? The credit or the debit side? Is actually on the credit side. If you refer back to your abalin, the hasil serbana is always on the credit side of your account untung rugi because hasil is on the credit. Lah. All right. So if you have to credit your account untung rugi, meaning I have to debit my account 73 here. You put into account untung rugi. So that how much is that? 6,000. Your house is uh, Sabana. So very simple. You just compare which size is bigger. Here will be 6,500. Right? 6,500. So Jumla 6,500. So then you use this one minus 6,000. We get 500. And this one is our Sewa Belum Or if you don't want, you can use HP. So, bagi HP, 
Bucky BB uh, 500. Why is it on the credit side? Because it is a liability. Why is it a liability? Because Belum Tepoole is a L liability. Is it? So this one is a general one. So, yeah. So question four. Are you guys following up to question four? If yes, type four in the chat box. Okay, great. So this one pretty much sum up the one, two, three, four concept for economy. So this is how you do for the economy. No? All right, so they have belanjut, prabaya, belum bayar, hasil, belum terima, belum terboleh. All right, so what we did here is just the basic catatan. Okay, the basic pengiraan. So now, let's do question five together. You need to have some challenging. Okay, so this is, if the... If this kind of question comes out in the exam, then it will be tested usually this way, this kind of way. All right. So let's look at question five. A. Okay. Five A. What do we have to do? Uh? We have to do challenge plus and general meaning. We have to do this lah. All right. So before that, now can you see? Mangmatamat. Now slowly, you will touch on mangmatamat. Tambahan. Before that, we hardly have maklumat tambahan in your bab 7, isn't it? But now we have a maklumat tambahan. And this is in Bangan Duga. But here we just focus on two items. But then when you have a long question, they give you a lot of in Bangan Duga. And then they will have 5 to 6 to 7 uh, maklumat tambahan in the question. Alright? But now, okay, let's see. So maklumat tambahan. Kada bayaran masih belum dibayar sebanyak 800 ringgit. Masih belum dibayar. Sure way we know this is a belum bayar. Correct not? Uh, very simple. Okay, but this is a belum bayar. Okay, two. Belanjaan prabaya. The sure way tells us that this is a prabaya 330 ringgit. So, do we have to look at this part here? No. But then what I have to tell you is, Whenever you see the amount in the imbangan duga, like this one, have a debit credit or whatever in the imbangan duga, this figure is apa yang telah dibayar atau diterima. Okay? Put it inside your head. So the, the amount in this imbangan duga is always the amount yang telah dibayar dan diterima. It's not the sebenar. Okay, bukan sebenar. But then, every time when we're doing the question, we want to know what is the sebenar. Alright, later we will show it out in the uh, account here. In C. Alright, so let's do for the channel pelarasan jena ampers. We can do it already because we already know what is the balloon buyer, what is the pra buyer, isn't it? So, straight away. Okay, this is year which year? Okay, I didn't show the year then. Um, then never mind. Maybe I just here, I just put a. Uh, yeah, just give it a, a year, la, easier. La. Okay, 2021, uh, December 31st. Okay, so this is the uh, one we'll be using. So 2021, December 31st. Okay, so let's start from number one first. The kada bayaran masih belum dibayar. So this is the belum bayar. So think, belum bayar, what is it? Is it an asset or liability? The answer, belum bayar, you haven't paid much. So it's a liability. So everyone type L in the chat box for liability. Type L. Okay? So belum bayar is a liability. If it is a L, then same thing. We're going to credit it based on the ABA lame. Alright? So straight away, go to the second line. You credit 
kada. So you just write back the term kada bayaran. Then at the back you add the word belum bayar. How much? Really given you ma? Masih belum dibayar eight hundred ringgit. So this eight hundred lah. So here when we debit we use the original which account kada bayaran. 800 ringgit. So this is to merekodkan kada bayaran belum bayar. Is it? Okay, continue. Number two. Belanjaan prabaya. Prabaya is a what? Everyone type A in the chat box. Because prabaya is a asset type A asset, right? So if it is an asset, asset in the abali means on the debit side. So we have to debit my uh, belanja um prabaya. So when you credit, you credit what is the original account? The original account is actually the belanja um. How much? Three three zero, three three zero. So in your kaderangan here, you just write same thing. Mere kot gan belanja am prabaya. That's it. Done. This is your first A. Now, so very simple, isn't it? Okay, good to be. Now we have to book our account. So, how are we gonna open the account? So, same way, okay. So, start from account card by run, right? Ada bayaran. This is year 2021, 2021. Okay. So account kada bayaran. So first thing first, always think about the bank, right? I told you that the imbangan duga here is always the total dibayar atau diterima, meaning normally this figure here is shown yang dibayar atau diterima dalam bank. Alright, so let's start from Kada Bayaran. So there's 2,300 yang telah dibayar. I already paid 2,300. So if you pay in your bank account, meaning your money keluar. Your money keluar means if you open a bank account, out means credit, you credit your bank. So if you credit your bank, I mean Kada Bayaran, I have to debit it. So here you put bank, 2,300. Right, then after that, think of your okay. Now, this we don't have the account untung rugi figure. I don't know what is the belanja sebenar. Tadi, we already know because the question give ma, right? Sebenar, but here don't have what is given is the belum bayar and prabaya. Okay, so now let look at your kada bayaran. Belum bayar, belum bayar is a liability. Right or not? So if it is a liability, it is on the credit side. So on the credit side, ah, remember credit side. Ah? So now what you're gonna do is after this one line double line, go here on the credit side, and you put baki PV. See, because we know it is a credit. A kind of and balloon buyer is a credit side. So it is here, baki BB. How much is that? 800. So when there is a Baki BB, there is a HB of 800 ringgit. Same figure. This one. Then you can add them up. 3001, 3001. You see, we're doing magic here. So here definitely will be 3001. So meaning this 3100 ringgit, normally you see what is inside. There's account, there's bank and HB and so on. So what is missing here? 
the account don't reach the therefore this is sent to the account already three thousand one hundred Okay, so this 3100 is the Kada Bayaran server now. That's what we send to the account to give. You want to use your logic to think now. See Kada Bayaran. Berapa yang kita telah bayar? Kita telah bayar 2300 ringgit. Lala. This is apa yang kita telah bayar 2003. Then maklumat tambahan dia cakap apa? After you pay 2300 ringgit, kamu masih ada Lapan ratus ringgit yang belum dibayar. So if you use common sense, I already paid two thousand three hundred, and I still have another eight hundred haven't paid. Then I just add them up. Then I will know what is the total cost, ah, the total actual cost, ah, which is the three thousand one hundred. Do you get it or not? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. That's why this account will give will show the three thousand one hundred ringgit. So it's actually the same thing. One is you use logic, you just straight away do this uh hitung equation, then you can get it. Another way to do it is you you actually open an account key to get your answer. All right, so this is using account key to get the answer. All right, so now we move on to C. You're using the same way to C. So here, we are doing account belanja up. Okay, account belanja arm. 2021, get Malaysia. Okay, so same thing. So, belanja am. It's a belanja ma. So, you pay ma. You pay how much? 5,120 ringgit. So, when you pay 5,120 ringgit, you pay money kalor. Money kalor means you credit your bank. All right, when you credit your bank, you have to debit your belanja am. So, here, you put bank. Uh, 5,120 bucks. Uh, 20 ringgit. December. 31st. Okay. Then after that, the belanja am prabaya. Prabaya asset. So when we know it's an asset, meaning it is on the debit side. So where do we record this debit side? The debit side should be always after the, the, the jumlah, the one line double line. One line double line. Then here asset, ah, debit side. So here, in January 1. You see it. If you want, you prefer to use prabaya, then you just write belanja am prabaya here. Let me repeat. If you prefer to use another one, then you just write belanja am like here. Belanja am prabaya. So if you mention like that, then here you have to put the same belanja am prabaya. Okay. Uh, how much is that? Uh? 800 ringgit, right? Is it? Oh, no. Sorry. 330. 330. Three. So, that's it. If you don't want, or do you use part of VHB and also that? Okay, so I think this is all the information that we have. Then now you can close it. Which side is bigger? That bit seller 5.20 ohm, right? So here 5.20, so meaning there's something here. So you use this 5.120 minus 330, you get. 4790. So this 4790 will be sent to the account. Why do we send to the account? Because this 7 4790 is the amount that is the hasil. Sorry, is a belanja serbana 4790. Okay, let's use common sense and calculate it. So I already pay 5120. Yeah, this is apa yang kita telah bayar. Then here, number two, do you check up? Belanja up actually there is a pra buyer of 330 ringgit. Yang you pay extra for this year. So when you pay extra, I cannot put it as sabana. I have to minus out first 330. Then I will only know what is the 
belanja sebenar. So you five one two zero minus three three zero, you get four seven nine zero, which is the same figure as this one, which will be sent to your accounting. You see, it's the same thing. Okay, so this is your C. Then we go to the D. So now in D, we are required to do a particular accounting rugi, meaning you just do an accounting rugi lah, right? In bentuk T. So I'll just do a simple one. So there are only a few things that we have to record here. Accounting rugi. So for account room rugi, there's no date one, so you don't need to put date. Okay. So uh here account untung rugi. So okay, how do we do this? So we know that in account untung rugi, this is the belanja side, this is the credit side. This is what I've taught you in bug seven. The T format for account rugi. All right. So here is the belanja. Here is the hasil. So here there are two ma kada bayaran. So basically, is here right kada bayaran and belanja. All right. All right. But then you cannot show we use this figure in Bab Seven when we are doing the Penyata kewangan, we should away take the figure from imbangan juga, isn't it? Alright? Because that is when there is no maklumat tambahan. Now they are telling us there is error in this figure. That's why we need to do the pengarusan. After that, we need to use the amount yang selepas pengarusan. After correction. If you know it's wrong already, you cannot use back the wrong figure. You need to use the figure that is corrected. Okay? So here, we cannot take this figure anymore. So which figure do we take? We take the figure that is sent to the account, the actual figure, the amount in Sabana. So Chonto, look at this account that we did just now. Account Kada Bayaran. So here you can see to account Nurugi, we actually credit the Kada Bayaran. All right. Therefore, in account Nurugi, we debit it. You see or not? And how much is that? 3,100. Same thing for your belanja arm. I already credited my belanja arm for account untung rugi. So in account untung rugi, it will be 4,790 on the debit side because you have credit, you have debit. You see not? So it's all connected. All the dot is actually connected in accounting. So as you can see here, it's all debit credit side. Just now here, you was wondering why like that, why like that, but then it's actually go flow into your account as you can see here. Can you understand? If yes, give me a D in the chat box. Type D in the chat box. Okay, cool. So you just show like that uh, because there's only two items uh, for your account only. So lastly, your E. So with my E, I have to do what? Penyata kedudukan kewangan. So maybe uh, this one. So I just do this one. Penyata kedudukan kewangan. Itu bentuk uh, bentuk T atau bentuk ah, we, we do bentuk T better lah, so that you can see. Bentuk penyata easier mah. So just do bentuk T lah. Okay. So 
for all these, okay, we have to see, uh, is it an asset or liability? If asset will be on here, uh, liability here, uh, okay? So this is a Banuki, by the way. So asset, there's asset semester and also asset, sorry, and liability semester. Liability semester. All right. Okay. So ring in Malaysia, ring in Malaysia. Okay. So how do we put it into PA? So if you remember how we did in last chapter when we 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 moved the bentuk T or sorry the ledger into the PKK. So where do we look at? We just look at the Baki Ruby. Is there? I give you a Tada bayaran bini baki bibi is on the credit side. 800 ringgit. Maksudnya, here on the credit side of your PKK, 800 ringgit. So you write kada bayaran. But I cannot just write kada bayaran. In the PKK, it must be a liability. So what is this? On the credit side, kada bayaran, belum bayar. So same goes to your bulan jam. This one is where? In the debit side, ma, 330. So, I write what? Belanja arm. So when will belanja arm become an asset? When it is a prabaya. And truly, this is a belanja arm prabaya and belanja arm prabaya is an asset. Therefore, it is put under here. And kada bayar belum bayar is a liability. That's why it is here. Is it not? So this is how you do account. That's why the, the, uh, the asset is on the debit. So as you compare back to your Abalim, asset is on the debit side and liability is on the credit side. Can you understand for E? If yes, type E in the chat box. All right, so this is how you do the perlarasan. So for this um part, we still have another I mean, six. Is a easy easy one. I would say six and seven. Okay, so we will complete this uh, in next class, and then we share away go into part B for chapter A. All right, so almost time. Let me give you your homework first. Okay. So hold on. Okay. So, uh, Let's do it this way. So you have to do page 178, question 38. And then this question uh, 38 on page 178 is actually the you got account perdagangan dan untung rugi and also penyata kedudukan kewangan, the easy one. All right. Then the page 192, you have to do question six and question seven. Yeah, I think just these three questions for now, a simple one. So I don't give you any homework today. Just three questions. Uh, you can finish it in one hour for sure. All right. So make sure you do your homework and I will see you in next class. Goodbye, everyone.